Hi, everyone, and welcome to the CompTIA A plus 220-1001 Module 1. Today's lesson is Lesson 1.6, BIOS Configurations, Part 1, Configuration of Peripherals in the BIOS. I'm your instructor, Bill Price. Let's get started. Okay, so let's start looking at today's learning objectives for this lesson. Uh, first, we're going to look at the boot sequence, followed by enabling and disabling devices in BIOS, uh, date and time, followed by clock speeds, and we're going to round up with firmware updates. So let's go ahead and get started. The boot sequence. When a computer boots after going through post, it's going to try to find an operating system to boot from. We learned that from an earlier uh, lesson. In the BIOS, there needs to be a boot order set that instructs the system in what sequence and where to boot from. Normally, you would uh, boot from wherever your operating system is, uh, wherever the operating system on the device, rather, is installed. The exception to this is, say, for instance, if you want to boot from a DVD or USB utility or something along those lines. In order to change this location, you have to change the boot order in the sequence in the BIOS. Now, depending on your BIOS, it may be different. Um, here we have an example of a, a Phoenix BIOS setup utility. Um, the settings allow you to run the boot sequence from a floppy drive, a hard drive, a CD-ROM, or an external device such as a USB, like we mentioned before. The first device in the boot order list um, has the boot priority. So that's where the system is going to boot from and look for first. It would be the same in the UEFI systems as well. Um, in the UEFI boot sequence, um, they work the same as well as the older legacy or BIOS systems. Check the manufacturer on specific instructions on your particular motherboard as to the layout and the where and uh, how it's um, set up. Make sure that your rec motherboard recognizes the boot device because if it doesn't, you may see an error such as like this, the non-system disk or disk error. Replace and press any key when you're ready. So basically what that error means is it's not properly identifying the first the boot device or the only boot device, depending on how your system is uh, set up. So let's have a look at as far as the, the boot order and some other things. Um, let's go to the lab. Okay, so let's start looking at some of the functions in the BIOS. Um, in this Phoenix BIOS setup utilities, let's first look at the boot sequence. The boot sequence, as you can see, would be located on the tabs here across the top. So let's toggle over to the boot tab. And you can see the priority of the devices that this system is set to start from. The first item on the list is removal of devices. The next would be hard drive followed by network boot, then CD-ROM drive. And again, according to the item-specific help on the right-hand side, you can make changes to this list and organize them the way you want. What if we wanted to first look for removable devices? Then we wanted to look for the CD-ROM drive. So we would take the CD-ROM drive and select it and hit the plus sign to make it second on the list, as I'm doing right now. So now we have removable devices first, the CD-ROM drive, then followed by the hard drive and the network boot. You would um, exit, save changes, and that change will be made. And again, remember, the first item on the list is the priority device. So that's what your system is going to boot from first. Um, let's move over to making changes with the date and time. The date and time on this particular example is found on the main tab. And you'll see that the time is set right now for um, in military time. 8 o'clock or 8.01, and the system date is 6.13.2009. Here is where you would make that change right in the BIOS. Um, again, after you make that change, save, exit, and you're done. Clock speeds. The clock speed, also called the clock rate, is the speed at which a microprocessor executes instructions. Every computer contains an internal clock that regulates the rate at which instructions are executed and synchronizes all various computer components. The CPU requires a fixed number of clock ticks or clock cycles to execute each instruction. The faster the clock, the more instructions the CPU can execute per second. When we look at CPU speeds or ratings, we see them rated using uh, either megahertz or gigahertz. Um, a processor that is 1.2 gigahertz, uh, we can see that a speed of 
3.2 gigahertz is faster. So therefore, uh, it may be able to execute more instructions. That's what it really comes down to or boils down to in computer terms. The higher the number, the faster the speed can execute more instructions per second. So uh, people that need high um, uh, processing processors uh, with high intensity uh, doing a lot of uh, different instructions need higher CPU uh, processors. Overclocking. Overclocking means to run a processor faster than the clock speed for which it was been tested and approved. Overclocking is a popular technique for getting more performance out of your system without purchasing any additional hardware. Because of this, because of this, overclocking is very popular among hardcore 3D gamers and anyone who need faster performance out of their PCs. Now, depending on your motherboard, overclocking is done one of three ways, um, by changing the jumper or dip switch settings, or by changing some chipset features um, in your BIOS, or using a combination of both. Check your manufacturer um, documentation on your particular motherboard. It will show you as far as how to overclock your motherboard. Um, some motherboards are geared toward overclocking, and it's laid out with specific instructions on how to do that. Now, one thing to be aware of, uh, some motherboards will not cover the uh, overclocking methods and it will may void the warranty. You Again, you have to check your mother, motherboard to make sure that it is covered. Firmware upgrades in your BIOS. Um, when we're doing firmware upgrades, there's going to be a number of different ways we can do that. In the older days, in the older systems, those were done from floppy disk and floppy devices. And we had to boot off those floppy devices and it would install the flash or the firmware upgrades. Um, newer motherboards have executables that they can run from right off the Windows operating system. Ch again, check your motherboard manufacturer and system details as far as how to upgrade your firmware, which is in your BIOS. When we're upgrading the BIOS, we want to make sure that that computer is not disturbed at all. We want to make sure we have a reliable power source, whether it's on a UPS. If it's a laptop, make sure the battery is uh, fully charged and it is plugged in. Um, again, newer BIOS systems do have executables where they could run the upgrades right from the Windows operating system. Um, flash drive upgrades, the newer UEFI um, BIOS motherboards will allow you to upgrade BIOS right from a flash drive, rather pulling it from it live or rebooting that system as well. So there's many different ways or, that you can upgrade the um, firmware on your system. But again, always check with your motherboard manufacturers for details in your particular system. Okay, so let's review some of the things that we went over in this lesson. So we talked about the boot sequence and uh, how to make changes in a boot sequence. We jumped into the lab and looked at that. We also looked at enabling and disabling devices in the BIOS uh, and also changing the date and time of the BIOS as well. We rounded out talking about clock speeds and overclocking and we finished up talking about firmware upgrades and updates on your system. So that is going to conclude today's lesson. Um, I hope you got a lot out of it. I know I sure did. And we look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. See you then.